डियर स्टूडेंट्स नमस्कार दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ ए टू लेक्चर क्वालिटेटिव डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर शल मॉडल इन द फर्स्ट वी हैड डिस्कस द एक्सपेरिमेंटल ऑब्जर्वेशन विच लेड अस टू थिंक दैट सम काइंड ऑफ शेल्स वर एग्जिस्टिंग इज साइड द न्यूक्लियस इन दिस लेक्चर आई वुड डिस्कस दो ओनली क्वालिटेटिवली हाउ मैजिक नंबर्स नेचुरली इमर्ज एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ सॉल्विंग शोडिंगर्स वेव इक्वेशन for nucleons and nuclear potential in first few slides i would recapitulate the evidences in favor of existence of magic numbers and close shells inside the nucleus this is the screenshot of uh, the first paper by mg mayer in this regard the title of this paper is on close shells in nuclei this is a paper in which one line abstract is given and i read it experimental facts are summarized to show that nuclei with 20 50 82 or 126 neutrons or protons are particularly stable this was the paper published in april 1948 so this was the experimental uh, set of evidences in favor of close shells in nuclei but theoretical underpinning for this uh, close shells of nuclei came from solving schrodinger's wave equation in a square well potential or harmonic potential this is the screenshot of the second paper by mg mayer it was published in 1949 title is again same on close shells in nuclei in fact the uh, attempt to explain these a magic numbers was done by northheim and finberg also they also solved schrodinger wave equation but there were two problems first not all magic numbers were explained second some crossing over between levels had to be assumed this crossing over of the levels may not be clear to you at this stage but it would become clear in next few slides uh mayer uh, mentions a informal discussion with enrico fermi in which enrico fermi suggested that there might be some indication of spin orbit coupling and mg mayer worked on it and she explained the existence of closure on the basis of solving schrodinger wave equation in which the potential term was replaced by harmonic oscillator potential and a spin orbit interaction term so this is the screen thanks are due to enrico for me for the remark is there any indication of spin orbit coupling which was the origin of this paper this entire thing was done independently by jensen suis and haxel from europe they also explained the existence of magic numbers with the help of schrodinger wave equation and spin orbit coupling i would be sharing all these three papers with you and would suggest that you should read these papers you may not understand the entire content of the paper but uh, reading it would be a delight for you this is the summary of the evidences in favor of magic number first evidence came from the abundances of nucleides we found that few nucleides are more abundant in comparison to the other the second evidence came from binding energy per nucleon curve and we noticed that there is some some peaks in the binding energy per nucleon when n or z is equal to magic number then we studied the behavior of binding energy of the last nucleon and we call this as the separation energy of the nucleon we found that this is extraordinary high if again n or z equals to magic number fourth evidence we discussed was uh, the nature of natural neutron a uh, delayed neutron emitters we had found that all the naturally occurring delayed neutron emitters were having number of neutrons equal to magic number plus 
then we studied the behavior of mm, neutron cross sections and uh, found that they are also, this behavior is also indicative of some kind of closing in the shells then we studied the nature of decay series and the value of quadrupole moments of nuclei also indicated that for nuclei having magic number uh, or magic nuclei were uh, showing some kind of spherical structure which also indicate some kind of shells inside the nucleus. So what are the basic premises or assumptions of nuclear shell model? The nuclear shell model assumes that each nucleon moves independently in an average potential caused by all other nucleons. In fact, nucleons inside the nucleus are interacting with each other nucleon, but this interactive effect of other nucleons on a nucleon on a given nucleon can be summed in the form of an average potential experience by this nucleon and we need not consider the effect of other nucleons individually. So the first assumption is that motion of nucleon is independent of all other nucleons and the effect of all other nucleons is considered in the form of an average potential experience by the nucleon. So solution of Schrodinger's wave equation in this potential gives us insight about the nature and structure of the nucleus and the Schrodinger wave equation is what we all know it is del square psi plus 2 m upon h cut square e minus vr psi equals to 0. Here m is the mass of proton or neutron whatever the case may be. Vr is the average potential we had discussed. The exact nature of the nuclear potential Vr is unfortunately not known to us. But it has been observed luckily that solution of Schrodinger's wave equation does not depend much on the exact nature of Vr up to an extent. So uh, there is a kind of freedom, a, a degree of freedom for left for us that we can choose any Vr which satisfies the basic nature of nuclear forces and then we need not bother about exact shape of uh, potential curve or nature of potential. There are three common test potentials. One is harmonic oscillator potential, the other is woods action potential and the third one is square well potential. You need not remember the expression for these potentials at this stage because I am not going to solve this Schrodinger wave equation uh, here. We would discuss the nature of solution but we would not give the steps of solution here that is not part of your syllabus it is okay if you remember that there are th three kinds of test solutions available are more than three three you know but there can be other potentials as well solution of Schrodinger wave equation suggests that there are only specific energy levels available to nucleons that is very important this is same as the energy levels one gets while solving hydrogen atom problems. You might remember there was uh, a hydrogen atom problem which was in your syllabus in BSc second year paper third and you saw how atomic electron le energy levels came as a natural consequence of Schrodinger's wave equation and quantization. Similarly, in case of nucleons, there are only certain energy levels permitted. The form of solution of Schrodinger's wave equation in any spherically symmetric potential is this psi r, which is a function of r theta phi, which comes out to be product of two function. One function is dependent on distance r only and is governed by two quantum numbers n and l. It is represented here by u n l r and the second part is a function of theta phi and is governed by two quantum numbers l 
and um, this is known as spherical harmonics it is represented here as y ln theta pi schrodinger's wave equation tells us that for each value of n there are 2 into 2l plus 1 degenerate energy levels corresponding to 2l plus values of m and 2 values of s 2l plus 1 values of m are minus l to plus l in a step of 1 and 2 values of s are plus half and minus half it has been observed that a large energy gap occurs between certain values of n and l and this large gap causes some kind of closure of energy levels this would be clear in next slides intrinsic angular momentum that is spin s of the nucleons interacts with the orbital angular momentum that is l which causes a small perturbation thereby resulting in further splitting of energy levels this would be clear in next slides also the result of this entire calculation is that the magic numbers of nucleons as well as other properties can be arrived at by approximating the model with a three dimensional harmonic oscillator plus a spin orbit interaction for lambda equal to 2 it is uh, since an even number there are two values of l permissible that is 0 and 2 so 1d and 2s orbitals are permitted 1d can accommodate 10 uh, nucleons and 2s can accommodate 2 nucleons so up to this 12 plus 6 plus 2 that is 20 nucleons can be accommodated the fifth column gives you the value of n or z whatever the case may be you can see only energy lay, uh, magic number up to 20 can be reproduced with harmonic oscillator potential the next test solution is uh, square well potential shown here um, by the blue dotted line on the curve if we use this potential and solve Schrodinger's wave equation for this potential, we get the energy level scheme as shown here. Here, uh, 1s, 1p, 1d are the number shown here in black represent the orbitals and the value 2, 2l plus 1 gives the value of nucleons which can be accommodated in this orbital. As you see, only these quantum numbers can be reproduced by square well potential. Quant magic numbers beyond 40, that is 50, 82, 126 cannot be reproduced by either harmonic oscillator potential or square well potential. Luckily, on the suggestion of Enrico Fermi, Mayer considered some kind of spin orbit interaction in addition to average spherically symmetric potential and found that the addition of spin orbit interaction splits energy level in such a way that the resulting energy levels reproduce magic numbers quite well the same thing was done by Haxel, Jensen and Swiss and they also reproduced magic number by using the concept of spin orbit interaction in addition to spherically symmetric potential so this is the term which was used by Mayer and Jensen this added a term minus fr into l dot s where l is the orbital angular momentum vector and s spin is the spin angular momentum vector so v nuclear becomes vr minus fr into l dot s 
if we calculate this l dot s we find that this l dot s is h cut square by 2 l for j equal to l plus half and is equal to minus h cut by 2 l plus 1 for j equals to l minus half i have taken this expression from a textbook on nuclear physics by roy and nigam you need not go into the details of this calculation at this stage you would study this in your msc classes i am just giving you to give you a glimpse of what was done behind this entire calculation so once this spin orbit term was added in vr term the energy level which was corresponding to a given value of l was split in two energy levels the lower energy level corresponded to higher value of j that is l plus half and the upper energy level corresponded to lower value of j that is l minus half reason of this entire thing would be explained in higher classes so we are now at a stage when we have to solve schrodinger's wave equation in which v nuclear term is made up of two parts one is vr which is some spherically symmetric potential we can take a square well potential we can take harmonic oscillator potential and we can take wood saxon potential and the second part is fr l dot s which represents the spin orbit interaction among nuclei if we use this term which is shown here the 1s level is since l is equal to 0 there is no possibility of l minus half so there is only one energy level permissible this 1p level is split in two parts one is 1p 3 by 2 which is the lower level which can accommodate four nucleons the upper level is 1p half which can accommodate two nucleons the next 1d level is split again in two parts 1d 5 by 2 which which can take six nucleons the next is 1d 3 by 2 which can take four nucleons the next is again 2s which can accommodate two nucleons up to 2s level 20 nucleons can be accommodated and after that a large energy gap exists which closes this shell up to 20 the next is 1f which is split in 1f 7 by 2 and 1f 5 by 2 1f 7 by 2 can accommodate 8 nucleons 1f 5 by 2 can accommodate 6 nucleons and at 1f 7 by 2 28 nucleons can be accommodated there is a large energy gap between 1f 7 by 2 and 1f 5 by 2 so a kind of closing occurs at this energy level also and we find that the magic number 28 is reproduced naturally here this is the 2p level which is split in 3p 3 by 2 and 3p the uh, 2 3p half this 2p half a 3 by 2 level can accommodate 4 nucleons and 2p half can accommodate 2 nucleons what you need to notice here is that 2p 3 by 2 level penetrates below 1f 5 by 2 level that is the concept of penetrating energy levels it is the 1g level which is split in 1g 9 by 2 and 1g 7 by 2 for G, uh, say 9 by 2, we can accommodate 10 nucleons. For G, 7 by 2, we can accommodate 8 nucleons. There is a large energy gap, so shells close here and a magic number of 50 occurs. Same is done in the next energy levels. So, whenever there is a large energy gap, a kind of closer in the shells occur 
shafts and this uh, closure of shells causes the occurrence of magic numbers. Again, there is a penetrating energy level at 3p3 by 2, which goes below 2f5 by 2. Again, y, 1i energy level is split in 1i 13 by 2 and 2i 11 by 2. When I say 13 by 2, I mean to say this is L plus half. And when I say i 11 by 2, I mean to say it is i L minus 1 by 2. You see that if we consider the spin orbit coupling in addition to realistic potential, we can very naturally explain the occurrence of magic numbers. This is the scheme which you need to remember. This is the energy level scheme and I suggest that you try to remember it one or two revision you would be able to reproduce it this is the scheme there is a mnemonic given in uh, the book by resnick and iceberg and he says that eat potatoes if park is bad which can be said in other words spuds s p u d s spuds if i f if pug p u g pug dish d i s h dish of o f o pig p i g spuds if pug dish of pig the next step of this mnemonic is to remove all the vowels but the last one so what are the vowels? U of spuds, I of if, U of pug, I of dish, O of ob, and I of pig. Of these vowels, only last that is I of pig is to be retained and all other vowels are to be left. That is, these letters are to be retained and these letters taken one by one reproduce the energy level scheme for nuclear shell model. The first S comes from S of spots. The next one P comes from P of spots. Next D comes from the D of spots. And then 2S comes from the last S of spots. The F of if gives you the indication of 1F. P of pig gives you the indication of 2P, then G of pig gives you the 1G or energy level, and then D of dish gives you 2D energy level, S of dish gives you 3S energy level, H of dish gives you 1H energy level, F of this O gives you 2F energy level. P of pig gives you 3P energy level, I of pig gives you 1I energy level and G of pig gives you 2G energy level. So again, I, what we need to remember is puns if pug dish of pig remove vowels are in the energy levels. I think you can remember this very easily. So to conclude, a nuclear ground state corresponds to occupation by the neutrons and protons of the lowest single particle energy levels which are compatible with the exclusion principle. We have to apply Pauli's exclusion principle. An even number of protons and neutrons in the state of lowest energy couples to zero angular momentum and even parity. If there is z equal to even or n equal to even, then the 
total angular momentum will be zero and the parity of the nucleus will be zero for odd a nuclei either z or n may be odd if z is odd that is number of protons is odd nuclear angular momentum that is the angular momentum of the nucleus is usually equal to that of the last added proton and if n is odd that is number of neutrons is odd then the uh, nuclear angular momentum would be the angular momentum of the last added neutron few exception to this rule occurs and these exceptions are for light nuclei we need to remember that shells for protons and shells for neutron are independent of each other potential for the nuclear model was a problem that is it is a problem at this moment also because we don't know the exact nature of interaction between the nucleons so this was the biggest problem faced by the physicists Before I conclude this talk, I would like to give you a homework sort of task. Uh, you all know that I have given few names while discussing this uh, shell model. The first shell model was proposed by Dimitri Vyanenko in 1932. Finally, the model was developed in 1949, in which it was Eugene. Wigner who gave the number uh, name magic numbers and it was the work of Maria Goypert Mayer who first summarized the evidences in favor of closing of shells and then she introduced the concept of spin orbit interaction and solved and Schrodinger's wave equation and reproduced magic numbers successfully. Same was done independently by Haxel, Jensen and Swiss. For these contributions of these fellows, they were awarded Nobel Prize in 1963. I suggest you all to search uh, and Google and read about Paul Wigner and tell me what were his other contributions to science. I suggest you all to read his famous paper which is entitled as unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in physics perhaps i would give you this paper to girls in this group especially to sopnil and puja i suggest that try to read about uh, mayer and tell me what especially you noticed about her so very simple task just read and let me know
these are the books which uh, one should consult and i have consulted while studying nuclear physics so i am giving you the list i don't think that at the level of bsc you would get time to go through these books i think you might have s b patel's book on nuclear physics you might have concepts of modern physics by arthur bison if anybody of you goes to pursue msc he would certainly read these books and before i conclude i suggest you all to read this poem which is a beautiful poem leek par ve chale jinke charan durbal ho raha re hain hame to jo hamari yatra se bhane aise anirmit panth pyare thank you and please uh, update me about what you learned in this lecture and also share your queries about it.